nature is the thing that gives inspiration to all the rest. They will go to the farthest corners of the earth, sometimes risking their lives. They'll wait long hours, day and night, in all weather, just to capture one moment in their lens, in their effort to convey to us the wondrous beauty of nature, encompassed in one perfect shot. There is an ideology that motivates them, their desire to preserve nature and raise awareness of its importance. First and foremost, I'm a bird watcher. That's how I see myself, meaning I love birds and I, I dream about birds. <laughs> I feel so lucky as a photographer to live in Israel, which is like a meeting point, a crossing point for, it's a highway where, where birds from Europe and Asia cross a very narrow uh, strip between the Mediterranean Sea and the Red Sea all the way to Africa. So every uh, month in the year, we can see different species of birds. We can see millions of raptors, millions of pelicans and storks. But this bliss and this beauty are marred by the threatening statistics. Sadly, the numbers of birds around the world have uh, dropped to 10% of what they have been uh, 50 years ago. It's hard to believe. And they are being hunted all around us in the Mediterranean countries, in Lebanon, in Syria, Jordan and Egypt, hunted by millions. So for anyone considering this line of work, here are some basic requirements for the job. First of all, uh, lots of patience being able to, to suffer a disappointment because you have to understand that 99% of what you're going to do is going to be a complete failure. When you uh, rely on nature, uh, most of the time, uh, the bird or animal will not come to where you planned. Art uh, uh, like draws its inspiration from nature and you can uh, get new angles of photography that uh, no one ever has uh, imagined. That's when you get your best picture or best shot. It's worth all the suffering. You need a persistence, wait for the right moment and even believe that this moment will come. You might blink for a moment and the, this moment will disappear for the next day. I had a project uh, trying to photograph a very, very rare desert tony owl in the desert and it didn't appear, it didn't show up. I had to drive uh, three hours uh, in each direction uh, for about 20 nights uh, in order to try and uh, catch a glimpse of this bird. And eventually I managed and I was so proud of it because I was the first one to do it. Patience, motivation, and an abundance of faith are not enough. It is lady luck that often makes the difference. I was lucky to join a team of uh, photographers from the National Geographic that their mission was to get uh, one shot of a wolf uh, chasing uh, an ibex. And they did all the right things they should. They came on the right time of year, they waited the whole month. They woke up uh, two hours before sunrise just to be on the right spot, wait for the ibex, and after one month, uh, they didn't get that shot and went back home. And uh, a month later, a young ranger, uh, amateur, 
uh, sent me this amazing uh, video from his uh, cellular phone that he saw a wolf chasing in uh, mid midday uh, an ibex and catching him. So it just shows me uh, that uh, besides being a, a professional, you need a lot of luck for nature photography. If you respect nature, nature will uh, give you back. And if you feel that you are just coming to, to take something from nature and you create uh, damage to a bird's nest or to a mammal, you won't get uh, far with it. And uh, it creates much more damage to, to nature and to nature photography. We encountered many different desert dwelling animal life in the course of our stay. Among them, a pair of Tristram starlings who nest in the cliffs. One of the most funny birds we saw today was the whore of the desert, as we Israelis call them. These are the Tristram's grackles. These are a species of starlings, which are found only around the Dead Sea area in Israel. And they, they just are so smart in the desert. They know it's much more easy to find food uh, close to people because the people always leave some leftovers, some breadcrumbs uh, they can find and eat. So the um, Tristram grackles will always come uh, to people uh, if they are being offered some food. Birds, they are easier to approach because they don't have a sense of smell. But the mammals are really, really smart and I was so lucky when I was uh, waiting for uh, vultures one day in a hide uh, this was like uh, 50 degrees Celsius and uh, so stinking and hot and humid that after no vulture came, uh, suddenly a pack of four wolves, Arabian wolves, just came from nowhere to smell this uh, feeding station. Some animals have a negative reputation, like the hyena or the wolf, but it's just a reputation and these animals are just looking for something to eat and they'll run away from you from kilometers. It's really, really hard to get close to these animals. In Israel, open spaces, wild and uninhabited, scarce as they are, must compete often with its growing military training needs. And nature has to share uh, military zones with the army. In nesting uh, birds like the vultures, uh, suffer because of uh, jets flying very, very, very low by the cliffs. And many, many uh, nesting birds have disappeared because of these uh, drills. With so many threats to the region's natural habitats, some are trying to find solutions. We brought the AFN, the, the Artists for Nature Foundation uh, members, which are nature artists from all over the world the best of their uh, profession to portray the Dead Sea. We held a meeting with 400 children, Palestinian, Jordanians, uh, Bedouins, and of course uh, Israeli Jews. And those children were exposed to both uh, art, nature conservation, and uh, children their age from all these countries together. The importance of nature conservation is a major reason some photographers are so committed to their work. But this commitment does not come without sacrifice. You know, a nature photographer uh, has, uh, has to be out of home for hours, for days and for weeks. And uh, you pay a sacrifice with the family. You need a whole uh, family that will um, support you. Otherwise, you, uh, you need a family that will support you. Otherwise, you won't be able to do it. You need to be very persistent to have a deep uh, understanding of why you're doing it. If you do it because of uh, a deep passion for nature conservation, you might succeed.